Hello, good people. My name is Dimitri. <laughs> what was that? It is the season of the top five and tens, and it's pretty incredible how far the MySpace has changed over 2021. So aside from the weight reductions, we're now seeing return of the classics with modernized guts, some pretty serious innovation with tempered glass skates, wireless mice with battery life so good it is out of your mind. And today I will give you my MVPs that should be on your radar, plus some more MVPs from MVPs themselves. Um, are you not forgetting anything? Um, no. Like the usual, product links will be right below the timestamps, plus a sub to the channel will give you 30 years of precision gaming. Right. Okay, so let's start with the masterpiece from Zai, the MZ1 from Extra 5. Mm -hmm. This is definitely one of my favorites of this year. It took a few weeks of training, but it's almost the perfect FPS mouse for me. The teardrop shape is very fingertip focused with deep finger grooves that lock your grip. All points of contact on the mouse are solid, so you're not feeling the holes. And I love the totally driverless nature of the mouse with clever switch and button combos to change your lighting, DPI, lift off distance, and even the side top button uh, as F11 or page down. Specs wise, it is absolutely solid, very lightweight, reasonably priced as well. But over time, as I put in many months of usage into it, it started to creak and the interior logo piece uh, fell off. And now it's just like, jumping around inside the body. I am happy to report though that the new white model has much better build quality and looks absolutely incredible and unique in this gradient illumination and the slightly translucent body material. Overall, this is the mouse that got me inspired to go back into serious FPS training with CSGO, with EFT and many, many hours into AimLab. The cable is also fine, but a wireless MZ1 would be end game material for me. Um, excuse me, are you just gonna skip the very beautiful pre-roll? It kind of breaks the flow of the video, you know? I am editing this video, so enjoy his second pick right after this. Say hello to gorgeous illumination and silent performance with the new light wings from Be Quiet. Available in two sizes, high speed or standard versions with a very pretty circular diffusion to display ARGB illumination. The three pack also comes with a hub and controlled via your motherboard. Check them out below. All right, so moving on to my next favorite, here we have the wireless Razer Arachi V2. So I clawed this one with a few grip tapes on there that seriously lock it in place. I don't particularly like the custom top plates, which are kind of a neat idea, but the material is very different versus stock. It's just not as grippy. But aside from that, it's kind of the perfect small wireless mouse. It's nicely balanced because the battery compartment is angled and you can actually use either AAA or AA batteries for weight customization. The USB dongle stashes away inside the body. If you're using this in Bluetooth mode, but the X shape is really what's selling here. I ditched all my G305s for the Arachi V2 and I am not looking back. It's a comfy shape that's lighter with much better scroll wheel and pleasant light clicks too. I have used this mouse on a daily basis ever since launch with zero hiccups, even without any problems in Synapse, and that's a weird thing to say. So I would definitely recommend this one, even though the G305 is generally much cheaper and still a fantastic recommendation. I think it's time we hear from our guests. Well, hand sizes are different. Let's hear what Frank has to say for his main. What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Thanks to Dimitri for having me on today. And one of my favorite gaming mice of the year is actually one of the newer ones on the market. And that's the Logitech G303 Shroud Edition. Now, in terms of, you know, specs and features, it's the same stuff from the G Pro X Superlight from last year, meaning it has the same coating underneath the Zero Zero Additive PTFE feet, same Hero 25K sensor, and same Omron 20mm switches. The main difference here this year is obviously the shape and size. At 74 grams, this is definitely a more unique shape with this more like sort of rounded hexagon design to it. You got drastic grooves cutting down to the bottom of the mouse on the sides. And once you master this new shape, it's gonna make for a deadly weapon, honestly. It's kind of made to feel like an extension of your hand. It's very ergonomic in that sense, even though it's more an ambi mouse. So the shape isn't gonna be for everybody. In fact, just forget trying to comfortably palm this mouse, but say you fingertip or close claw grip. It's just gonna feel so natural and right in your hand. I've just absolutely loved using this. Definitely one of my favorites of the year. However, I definitely gotta give a shout out to one of my recent faves that I got in, the Pulsar X-Lite Wireless. They got it in black and white, different colors coming up. It's 57 grams, more your traditional, you know, ergo shape to it, definitely, but it just feels super light. And my favorite thing about them is their Super Glide glass skates. These literally feel like butter on your mouse pad. It's absolutely insane. Think of like an air hockey table. That's what this feels like with these glass skates at this weight. Probably been using this the most recently and I just absolutely love it. So those have definitely been my two favorites of the year for sure. I'm Random Frank P 
Have a good day. Thanks, Frank. We actually did not receive the 3 of 3, so it's good to have his opinion on here. Now, on to your next pick. So I actually also picked the X-Lite Pulsar Wireless Super Glide as my top five because my gosh, the glide is absolutely next level. Take it away. This is an ergo shape that most people would appreciate. It fits me very well, despite my slightly wider hand. Now Pulsar is on my radar because of their tempered glass skates. That is the smoothest gliding experience you can get on the mouse. Plus combine that with the wireless operation and we have a very unique experience that requires some precision training and a precision mouse mat to give you appropriate control. Otherwise the mouse just glides around. You would have to even make sure that your desk and your surface you're playing in is perfectly flat. Otherwise the mouse will slowly glide away and fall off. That has happened to me. There's just so little friction. You would need to lower your DPI and make sure that you're using a precision control mouse mat. Otherwise on speed, it's actually too difficult to control the precision of the cursor. The mouse is also incredibly lightweight at 59 grams with half the bottom missing by design while not creaking anywhere and still feeling solid. It charges with USB-C, battery life is around 70 hours with KLGM 8.0 switches, which are super. The only two points of concern are the primary clicks overlapping uh, when one is clicked and the scroll wheel on my early sample has very light scroll steps. I really feel like Pulsar is doing the right job of rising through the ranks which is why it deserves to be in my top five. Now moving into a more nostalgic piece, here we have the Corsair M65 RGB Ultra, which is also available in a wireless operation, while still delivering really fantastic competitive specs like 8,000 Hertz polling and a really interesting and unique gyroscope that is not a stupid gimmick as I thought it would be. So I used the original for years and I'm still surprised to see an aluminum frame here, despite the whole lightweight craze and making sure that there's just as little body as possible. But it's actually the reason why I want to include this in my top five, because it is one of the only heavy mice I can comfortably use with tunable weights between 97 and 115 grams. I find the shape really supporting. It's like a mini flat ergo mouse, but despite the textured sides, they can still get a little bit slippery. The main highlight though, are the extremely fast and super satisfying Omron Quick Strike switches, which are also surprisingly quiet. The scroll wheel has nice control, while the rest of the buttons are well positioned except for the DPI switches that are super heavy and unpleasant. The mouse also has a six axis gyroscope that at first I thought would be a pointless marketing gimmick, blah, 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 but it actually has really fantastic functionality that you can set to any of the positions to anything you want in IQ software. And all those things are activated instantaneous without any delay, without any waiting around. So for example, your left and right can be switching tracks, uh, li lifting it back can be play pause and has ton of functionality, both for productivity and desktop and also in games. You know what else has a variety of uses? What? Hearing from other people than just you. Let's hear what Brian Phillips has to say. Hey, Dimitri, and hello, good people. I love saying that. Brian here from Bad Seed Tech, and 2021 was actually a pretty good year for mice. We got the Razer Orochi V2 in there. We got the new G303 Shroud Edition from Logitech, but one that really stood out for me this year was the Final Mouse Starlight 12. The original price on these was $189, and this isn't something that you can just run out and buy. They always seem to be in high demand. They're produced and released in very small batches, and unfortunately, they're usually scalped online for enormous markups. What makes these stand out is the ridiculously lightweight at around 44 grams for the small version and about 49 grams on my scale for the medium. These are so lightweight that the box seriously feels completely empty when it shows up. How they do this is by using magnesium alloy for the top shell triggers and the sides. It's not only lightweight, but it's really strong as well. No creaking, no flex, nothing. The underside or bottom plate is Ultim plastic, which is necessary to have the wireless signal pass through. The wireless performance is right up there with any of the top wireless mice out. And unlike a lot of their older models, this one pulls at a thousand hertz and it's got some pretty bananas battery life. I charge this thing like once a month. The shape with Final Mouse is pretty much always the same. So it's symmetrical, it's low, it's flat, nice curves on both sides and comfort grooves on the triggers. Size wise, the small is identical to the Ultralight 2 Cape Town. With hand measurements of 20.5 by 10.5, the small is uncomfortable for me to use in pretty much any grip for any length of time. The medium is a unique size to this lineup, landing somewhere between the Ultralight 2 and the Air 58 or OG Ultralight Pro, both of which are pretty big mice. Medium is near perfect for me for fingertip. I love the feel of the main clicks and the small corner feet feel very agile even on a control pad. I'm currently maining the Lethal Gaming Gear Jupiter and I love this setup. Downsides, price and availability obviously and it charges over micro USB as opposed to USB-C which some people will see as a negative. It also hasn't been exempt from its fair share of QC issues. Even my medium 
copy has the issue where the scroll wheel is off center. This was a first run for this design and Final Mouse has already released information regarding the existing QC issues they plan to correct with the forthcoming Starlight Phantom. These magnesium mice are difficult to produce, but I think Final Mouse has committed to trying to make these available full time after the initial launch of the Phantom. It is worth saying that there's no such thing as the best mouse out there for anyone, it's really shape dependent, and buying a super expensive mouse isn't automatically going to make you play worlds better, but if you're really into lightweight mice, wireless mice, and you like your mouse to look like a piece of art, this is about as good as it gets if you have the pockets and or the patience. If not, you can always find a size, shape, or a budget that works better for you. Hope everybody has a great holiday season. Thanks so much for the invite, Dimitri. Back to you. Thanks, Brian. Always a pleasure. So for my fifth place, that will have to go to Ninjutsu Katana Ultralight. Mainly because it has the original IntelliMouse shape, but with new sensor, good switches, a very light, non-perforated body, and large PTFE feet for easy glide. This is as simple as they get with four polling rates and four DPI levels at the bottom, and this ambidextrous shape that many people of the early 2000s grew up with. It is a large lightweight mouse with almost identical side curves to the G Pro X, but with more flaring at the rear, give me a little bit more grip when I lift the mouse. The KLGM 8.0 switches should be considered, you know, community's favorites, and they are crispy here with fast travel. The only drawback here is the cable. It feels heavier and not as flexible as the rest of the competition, even at this budget $49 price point. No RGB here is of course a positive, and you can also download the software to customize your DPI profiles that are saved onto the mouse. So if you are after this competitive esports shape on a budget, the Katana Ultralight should be considered. So Dimitri, do we have any audible mentions to satisfy the algorithm? Oh yes, we do. The Logitech G Pro X Superlight, of course. Nice. This one has been in my rotation lately as I've been absolutely loving the wireless nature and the precision I get with the shape. I don't really care that you can only switch DPI in the software, but it's also a very expensive mouse, which is why it won't be for everyone. The Zygon NP01 from Vaxi has also been on my desk because it's from the creators of the original Zowie products. So the NP01 is very much esports focused with an awesome right hand shape, all the proper specs with the classic separated buttons that are textured for grip and Huano 60M switches. The driverless nature is awesome and this is one of the best shapes for me for vertical target tracking and quick flicks. Lastly, I want to give a shout out to the Corsair Katana Pro XT because at $29, this is your go-to mouse and it's a much better alternative to the G Pro shape from Logitech with better sensor, better uh, switches, better cable, and they're also more lightweight. The surface coating on the Qatar Pro XT isn't as good as on Logitech, but it's definitely an easy recommendation. Uh, just make sure to get the Qatar Pro XT and not just the Qatar Pro. Those are different mice altogether. And so those are my top five for 2021. Again, thanks to Frank and Brian for joining this collaboration. It's always good to hear others' opinions. I would love to hear what you're taking with you into 2022 in terms of mice and are you looking for a particular innovation in the mouse space that you haven't seen yet? Let me know in the comments. I'm eager to see uh, what everyone's using. I'm Dmitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. And I'll talk to you in the next video.